guess what just arrived? Yep, take two. Hi, I'm Ash from Droning On, and yes, we do have another Anaga fly. This is part two of our review. If you haven't seen part one yet, click the link below and you'll be taken straight to it. So what happened last time? Well, we had one successful flight with our Anaga fly. After that, the battery failed, the battery charger failed, and the Wi-Fi module then failed as well. Pretty disastrous. Anaga fly have sent us the replacement version that we have here, and that's what we'll be using for this review. So since our first review, what has happened? Well, version 1.5 has now been canceled. That was the alternative version being offered to backers. All backers will now receive version one, which is the version we've got here. The fuel stick has been reduced in size from 10,000 to 5,000 milliamps. However, all backers will now receive two as compensation. And there have been lots of shipping delays. All backers should have their Anaga flies by now, but they seem to still be leaving the warehouses in China. In this episode, we'll be looking at the differences between the version we received before and this version. There are some minor changes. We'll be looking at the battery capacity, which is quoted as 1000 milliamps. We'll be checking to see if that is valid. We'll be looking at flights, testing it in manual and tilt mode, and also looking at advanced functionalities such as follow me and obstacle avoidance. We'll be taking apart the Anaga fly to have a look at what's inside and look at perhaps how easy or hard it might be to repair it. And we'll be also talking about what might be next for Anaga fly and their roadmap. But first, our new website droningon.co is rising in popularity and it's supported by our Facebook and Twitter pages so please be sure to visit them. Links are below now and if you click any of them they'll open in a new window. unboxed our replacement Naga Fly drone and whilst there aren't any design or hardware changes there are some very minor aesthetic changes that we'll show you now. First and the most obvious is the serial number sticker on the front which means that these individual units are now identifiable. The other element is a QC Past sticker which stands for quality control. We can only hope that an element of quality control was actually run on these and another small sticker here which I believe relates to quality control to illustrate the date in which that testing took place. And finally, around the bezel of the motor, there is a date which shows the manufacture of that motor. This one is actually 2016, March the 15th. Now, some users have been complaining about the Wi-Fi disappearing with their Anaga fly. I have a theory. The Wi-Fi module is situated directly beneath this panel here, this um, sticker. First recommendation is to remove that sticker and you'll notice immediately that underneath there are some additional cooling vents. The Wi-Fi module is behind these cooling vents, but directly on top of that is the battery. Now, after a seven or eight minute flight, the battery is incredibly hot, which is never good for a lithium polymer battery anyway. But for that battery to be on top of the Wi-Fi module, it's not good. And I think that's possibly the cause of the Wi-Fi module failing because of that excess heat. The Indiegogo campaign claims that the battery is 1000 milliamps, providing an outperforming flight time of 15 minutes. But end users are reporting that this is far from the case with flight times hitting 8 minutes on average. We crudely hooked up the battery to our advanced charger to test it cell by cell. First we discharged the cell slowly at only 0.22 amps to see how many milliamp hours we could extract. Once completed, the figures showed a theorised capacity for one cell of around 712 milliamps, far below 1000 milliamps, but this wasn't a fully charged battery. And so next we commenced a full charge of the cell at 0.85 amps, which when completed gave us a result of 750 milliamps. We repeated this test with the secondary cell, which returned the same result, and on that basis we conclude that the capacity of the Inaga Fly battery is more accurately 750 milliamps. The flight times given on the campaign page were only estimates, and that is perhaps excusable, but advertising a higher capacity battery than actually provided is false advertising. So we're at the field now, it's a little bit breezy, but we're going to give it a try and um, see how well the Naga Fly copes with uh, a little bit of wind. And shipped a nice case this time as well, so rather than just carrying an Arga fly in our rucksack, we've got some to actually put it in to protect it. Case is really um, well manufactured, feels good quality. The inside of it, the foam is very 
um, heavy duty, it's not kind of squidgy polystyrene. Um, and the, the Inaga fly is well secured within it as well. So, okay, so plug in the plug underneath. I don't know if you can hear, but there's actually thunder in the background, so we might have to cancel this flight. <laughs> we'll see how we get on. Okay, so with the Inaga fly on a flat surface, we now turn it on. Flat surface is really important. And after a few seconds, it will give out a beep. There he goes. So now we're ready to fire up the app and connect to it via Wi-Fi. Okay, so with my Inaga fly on a flat surface, I've also fired up the, um, the Wi-Fi and I can see that Inaga fly is there and I'm connected to the, the Wi-Fi network. So that's fine. Um, so what we now do is switch to the app and hit open your camera, which should show as a live preview. There we go. So what I'm first of all going to do is demonstrate tilt mode. Um, it seems that this is the mode in which most people have had success, so it seems worthwhile testing that first. So I'm going to leave the G sensor button on red here, the one I'm flashing now. So I'm going to leave it red illuminated, which means gravity mode is on. And I'm now going to press lock to start up the motors. Okay, so that was about three seconds delay there, actually. And now the key thing is to keep the phone flat. So with the phone flat, I'm now going to press the throttle up gently. Now let go of the throttle. And it's actually flying really well. So I'm just going to put the camera up to it now. So at the moment I'm not adjusting the altitude, I'm not touching the altitude control at all. I'm just simply controlling it by tilting the phone. So if I try and have both in display at the same time somehow. It's quite hard to demonstrate this whilst filming, controlling and flying at the same time, but it was far easier to control using tilt mode than I'd expected. The latency is only around half a second, therefore not so bad. I was able to complete an 8 minute flight in this mode. Remember however, that if you rotate an Argafly using the yaw control shown on screen now, you must remember to tilt your phone differently, because once you rotate an Argafly beyond centre, tilting your phone forwards will no longer make an Argafly fly forwards, but instead it'll fly in whichever direction it's now facing, and I think this may be challenging for new pilots. Here you can see me flying the Inaga Fly indoors using tilt mode within the confined space of my kitchen. It was easily done together with using Auto Land when I was finished. One issue that I did notice indoors and outdoors is that Inaga Fly tends to yaw a little during flight. This is when the aircraft rotates horizontally and points in a slightly different direction instead of staying fixed in the direction that you last set. The solution of course is to use the yaw control of the app to correct the direction but it shouldn't be drifting at all. I suspect that the cause is the onboard compass which needs the addition of a calibration routine such as on the DJI Phantom. I've passed details of this issue to Inaga Fly and they have said that they'll investigate immediately. Perhaps the biggest attraction of an Fly for backers is the follow me function. This feature allows aerial filming without the pilot giving any control inputs. As you move, an Fly tracks you in your mobile phone position and relocates accordingly, all whilst filming automatically. Okay, so in terms of follow me mode, we've just put it into follow me and it is staying with me. The problem seems to be that as it follows me around, it's not actually rotating direction. In this onboard video, I'm actually running and the Inaga Fly is sliding sideways to follow me instead of moving forwards. I'm not caught in the video because Inaga Fly doesn't seem to rotate in the direction that it's moving when it's in follow me mode. This seems like a simple firmware fix. I've notified Inaga Fly of this bug and hopefully they'll correct it, but in the meantime I was having to manually adjust the rotation using the yaw control. The next day I gave follow me mode another try. It was a breezy day but this time it was far more successful and I'm sure that that is due to the speed of the object that Inaga Fly is following. I picked up the pace and went for a proper run, giving no control inputs as you can see, besides increasing the altitude a few times. Follow me monitors the position of the smart device, it calculates the direction in which that device is moving and rotates automatically to face that direction. If the object isn't moving quickly, a Nargafly struggles to interpret where the object is going. 
So the faster you move, the better Follow Me will work. Remember that Follow Me only works with a red GPS signal and when not in tilt mode. It is irritating that the Anagafly app doesn't let you set the distance at which it will follow. You can only set altitude. Therefore, you have to do some testing to ensure that you're at the right altitude for the speed that you'll be travelling. Hopefully, they'll add this setting in a future app update. Overall, you really need to experiment with this mode to get it right. App updates will help and some patience and calm weather for smoother video. It's no Phantom 4, but for £200, it isn't so bad. By pressing the button marked G, we are turning off tilt mode. So now we're on manual joystick mode, which basically uses GPS to keep the position of the Anagafly stable. If we don't give any inputs, in theory, the Anagafly will just keep hovering in its current position. Um, if we do, however, give it inputs, it will move to the way that we're, we're telling it to move, or it will rotate the way we tell it to rotate, but it should then settle and stay in its hover position. So I'll start recording. Press unlock to start the propellers. And now I'm going to send it up to a bit of altitude. It's quite windy today. Okay, we're now up in the sky. And the Naga fly is not holding its position. I can see it trying, but it's fighting against a very, very strong wind here. Yeah, I mean, right now it's all over the place. It's not holding its position. I can see it trying to come back to its primary position, uh, but I think the wind is just too strong for it today. But okay, actually, it's not so bad. It's now settled in a quite a good hover, actually. So if I rotate it around, there you go, there's me, hello. Okay, so I'm not giving, right now, I'm not giving any control inputs at all, and a Naga fly is staying in the air, in position. There does seem to be a little bit of drift on the yaw, so it does seem to be rotating slightly by itself. So if I just give it an input to correct that and point it back towards me, but actually that's, that's not bad at all. It is pretty breezy today, hence why it's wobbling more perhaps than it normally would. But overall, I'm quite impressed by that. So I'm just going to send it up a bit higher now. At the same time, I'm going to move it backwards so that it can still keep me in shot. I'm still uh, connected to the Anaga flight, although I do notice a little bit of breakup now in the Wi-Fi signal. I think we might perhaps be a little bit too high. Oh no, we've got the signal back again, that's good. Okay, now that's pretty impressive. I am I would suggest it's probably about 100 feet away from me right now. Uh, and it is still holding its position, which is pretty impressive. Okay, so I'm just going to do a, a rotation, a uh, slow rotate to look at the scenery around us. Okay, what I do notice is the yaw control isn't proportional, so it only rotates at one speed. It doesn't rotate slowly or fast, it's a fixed speed. Again, it's still holding its position nicely up there. I'm still in range, still in signal. Okay, I'm going to bring it down in altitude now. It's coming down nice and smoothly. Okay, so that was approximately eight minutes flying time. That's not bad, a mixture of follow me, tilt mode, uh, and just a little bit of playing around. Upon landing and undoing the hatch to undo the connector, which you're supposed to undo after every flight, I can really feel the heat coming out from there. So I'm not surprised that the Wi-Fi modules keep failing for people. I'm, I'm convinced that it's because of the heat of the battery directly against that little piece of um, circuitry. But um, I'm going to charge it back up and then we'll bring it back out at some point and we'll test um, Follow Me a little bit more comprehensively. We'll also try some altitude testing as well.
Testing with manual joystick mode with GPS was fairly successful, except for the takeoff, where it seemed to take an Argofly a while to stabilize itself, requiring manual inputs to counteract the wind. My advice is that when launching in this mode, do not expect an Argofly to hold its position immediately and be prepared to give manual inputs until an Argofly is stable and at a good altitude. Despite it being a windy day, an Argofly coped well and held its position without us giving any primary control inputs, although the yaw drift is a minor problem and does require input at times to keep it facing in the right direction. A compass calibration routine will definitely improve this, and hopefully this will be introduced into the app. This mode is ideal for capturing photos because you can concentrate on capturing the photo rather than having to concentrate on flying as you do in tilt mode. And the photos are really where Anagafly excels. They're actually great quality. Sadly, however, the wobbly footage is not something that I believe can be easily corrected. I believe that this inherent wobble is due to the short length of the arms and the flow of the air from the props over the chunky body of this quadcopter. As a consequence, the Anagafly isn't going to be particularly stable in the air and post-processing would need to be used to smooth the footage, as you can see in this example. Obstacle avoidance is a hot feature amongst backers, many of whom have never flown quadcopters or drones before. To test this, I flew towards a pillow to minimise damage to the Anagafly and did some basic hover testing to see how the sensors would respond. At this slow hover, the Anagafly did occasionally respond by bouncing in the opposite direction, away from the obstacle. However, it was very inconsistent. Next, I flew gently towards the walls of my kitchen. As it nears the far wall, you can see the Anagafly pulling backwards. And then as the left sensors detect the left wall, it responds almost violently and sends it in the opposite direction, unfortunately crashing into my fireplace. I then tried some more realistic tests, flying into an obstacle at speed. These tests failed miserably and the Anagafly did not respond at all. There was just too much latency between the detection and the reaction. I took the Anagafly outdoors to test in the open. Again, the results were inconsistent, whereby it would respond on occasion, but not every time. I almost chopped my hands a few times. The radio control fanatics amongst us knew long before Anagafly that budget drones like this and Zano would never be capable of obstacle avoidance successfully, and so expectations were not high. What I did notice, however, is the sensors of Anagafly respond with varying strength. On my specific model, the sensors on the left and the right appear to be far more sensitive than those on the front and back. I'll have to confirm with Anagafly as to whether this is by design or pure chance. Another feature of the Anagafly is the auto land when the battery hits a certain threshold, specifically 10%. Here you can see that we're flying at a rather unhealthy 26%, but as the voltage drops down to 25%, a warning appears on the pilot's screen. At this point, you remain in full control and can ignore the warning, but when an Argofly drops to 10%, and we'll wind the video forward to demonstrate, the Argofly will commence an auto land, and it literally just does that. It slowly descends until it touches down, at which stage it automatically shuts off power to the motors. This is a very basic feature, but fortunately it does actually work, and when the warning first appears, be cautious around what you're flying above, because as an Argofly starts to automatically descend, you won't have any control over it. An Argofly is a compact drone, and the components inside are crammed into a tiny but chunky shell. With the underside cover removed, the first visible components are the Wi-Fi module and its two antenna cables which run into the feet on two corners of the Anagafly. Looking at the main PCB, there is a 4GB internal SD and slot which stores internal logs. We also suspect that it is used for firmware updates. The camera is now also removable on its ribbon cable and is exposed. The ideas immediately spring to mind on ways in which the camera angle could be altered, something that many backers have asked for. If a user were to alter the shell, they could run the ribbon cable through the shell and onto some form of angled mount, which can then be adjusted. But be warned, one crash and the camera may end up in bits. Looking at the arms, you can see the tiny wires which run to the motor as well as the embedded speed controllers. 
Lifting the primary PCB or circuit board, we now expose the other components, such as the IR sensors for obstacle avoidance. The way in which the PCBs connect via four micro slot pin connectors on each corner of the PCB is actually quite impressive. After detaching the speed controller cables, we're able to lift up the secondary PCB. On the other side of the black matting, on the right, is the black hatch, which is visible on top of the Anaga fly. This hatch is actually removable and the GPS antenna is then accessible. Overall, I was quite impressed by the compact and bespoke nature of Anaga Fly's interior, but I wish a little more focus had been given to the weight, as well as extending the arms to avoid the wobble. During this review, we thoroughly tested all of the major features promised for Anaga Fly. Some still have issues, but I'm seeing improvement when compared to earlier reviews. Anaga Fly are yet to release the firmware update tool, but I'm told that it's coming in the next few weeks. Between this and app updates, I hope that Anaga Fly will be able to improve this little drone significantly. So let's summarize the key points. Tilt mode is a nice way to control a Naga fly for new pilots, but keep an eye on the heading of a Naga fly. In simple terms, the way it is pointing. Be aware that if you rotate a Naga fly using the yaw control whilst in tilt mode, it will become confusing with how to tilt your phone, and that can take quite some practice to perfect. Manual joystick GPS mode works once a Naga fly has stabilized in flight but be prepared to give manual inputs if a Naga fly doesn't seem to be fixed in its location after launching. Only take off in this mode if the GPS text in the right top corner is red, unless of course you're flying indoors, but we would not recommend indoor flight with joystick mode. That's due to the latency in the control inputs. Follow me mode depends on the subject not moving too slowly. It also requires stable fixed flight before turning on this mode. So as per the manual joystick mode, ensure that an Naga fly is first stable in the air and holding its position. Only then should you press the follow me button. Also be aware that an Naga fly does not let you set the distance for follow me, only the height. Therefore do some testing to get the altitude right for the speed at which you'll be moving. Otherwise, you won't be in shot. And remember that whilst in follow me mode, you can adjust the altitude control. The video quality is sharp, but the wobble and unstable nature of the Inaga fly is disappointing. This is worsened when flying in anything above a light breeze. I do not believe that this wobble can be fixed via firmware or app updates, as this is a design issue in my opinion. The arms of the Anaga fly are too short and the chunky body affects the downforce of the air from the props. Anaga fly could introduce electronic image stabilization into the firmware, but this is yet to be confirmed. To reduce wobble, fly in calm or zero wind conditions. But please remember that this is a £200 or $300 mini drone. It is not a $1,500 Phantom 4. It has no gimbal and as a consequence it has to move and tilt to correct its location. And that of course is going to introduce instability to the videos. This is about realistic expectations, not helped by a Naga Fly's fake promotional video, I agree. But consider that for a very low price, you are getting a way to capture footage and good quality photos from the air. The flat battery auto land is a nice feature, but be aware that as the battery percentage approaches 10%, you should ensure that you're not flying above anything or anyone, because once auto land commences, you cannot control the descent. It is fully automatic. The props can hurt. You do not want an Naga fly landing on someone's head. The wireless won't be visible if you start up your Anaga Fly without an SD card installed. For some reason, the Anaga Fly's Wi-Fi module doesn't initialize unless an SD card is in place. But be careful when inserting SD cards because the design of the port makes it easy to accidentally lose the card inside the body of Anaga Fly. It's a pretty bad design. On Apple iOS devices, remember to connect to the Wi-Fi before starting up the Anaga Fly app. This is different to the Android app, and hopefully they'll fix this in a future iOS app update. Remember that when first starting up your Inaga Fly and pressing the power button, it must be on a flat surface. This is very important because that can affect the gyros within Inaga Fly. 
Ensure that you undo the underside battery connector when charging and after every single flight, otherwise you risk damaging the battery permanently. Also, the Inaga fly can be very hot after a flight, so ensure that you do not pack it straight into its storage case, allow the drone and the battery to cool first before you store it away. Heat from the battery is excessive, which is sat directly on top of the Wi-Fi module. This is a really bad design, as it risks affecting the PCB components inside as well. My theory is that the heat from the battery is causing the failure of Wi-Fi modules that we've read about. I do not see how Anagafly can address this without redesigning the way in which the battery is installed. To avoid damage, fly for shorter periods of time. Obstacle avoidance, as many of us speculated, is pointless and dangerous. We recommend actually turning it off in the settings menu. And finally, the internet seems to be going crazy around Anagafly. Complaints, negative reviews, refund requests and more. Anagafly have brought almost all of this on themselves by using some poor and unacceptable marketing tactics, starting with their fake promotional video, but more recently posting fake positive comments on videos, for example, even our own videos. Promising on delivery dates which come and go, faulty products and numerous replacements. But let's look at this realistically. Crowdfunding is a risk, you're not buying a product from Amazon or from a shop shelf, and you should only invest in crowdfunding projects if you can afford to lose the money. Many of the Xano backers didn't receive anything at all, and if they did, it barely flew and wouldn't even capture HD video. So at least Anagafly still exists, they're still shipping, and they're still improving the product. Anagafly is a crowd-funded campaign, and by backing this new startup company, you're also pledging your support to that company. The perk, or the Anagafly itself, is just that. It's a bonus. So finally, my advice is that if you're still waiting to receive your Anagafly, remember the risk that you've accepted. Have a little bit more patience and give them some more time, because quite honestly, the longer it takes for them to deliver your Anagafly, the better the end product that you receive will be. So that's it for now. I hope that that was useful. If you have an Anaga fly, please tell us about your experience by using the comments box below. Also like and share this video and do remember to visit our official website www.droningon.co. Thanks.